Welcome to the Bold Analysis. You are listening to this podcast live from County Zero Number 18, the county of Nyandarwa. And I have to admit, this place is very cold. Wow! Yes, I'm telling you this place is cold. Maybe I'm not used to um masuti, so sometimes it um it, it really gave us a bit of that. Ladies and gentlemen, I am in the county of Nyandarwa. The political developments in Mount Kenya and the events that happened after Uhuru Kenyatta made a technical appearance and the celebrations of the birthday. Some two critical developments that have emerged is what is going to form the basis of this analysis. And I'm going to explain to you why William Bruto is making a desperate attempt to mend fences with to mend fence with the former president Uhuru Kenyatta just days after the Gedigeshagwa impeachment. Kindly subscribe to our channel. We have an interesting podcast for you. But as you know, I am here also for Granny Care. So today, I spent time in Muranga. Not Muranga, I spent time in Nyandarwa. Mirarati, Miharati, not Mirarati, it's Miharati. Where we are supporting three elderly members of the society. They are staying in a squatter camp known as Miharati. And today, I interacted with them here. We were able to just assess the need. And I can tell you with a very, uh, you know, honestly, I can tell you that we are making a very good impact. I just want to show you a snippet, a story about um, Anyambura. This is the lady you're seeing on the screen. She's a squatter. She stays there. So that piece of land belongs to her. But apparently, ile nyumba yenye alijengewa ya kwanza iliaribika. But the just adjacent to that, to that there are some there is another the two houses you can see which belongs to grandchildren. So she lives kwa nyumba ya grandchildren, ya grandchild wake. But when that grandchild is around, uh, as she show is normally in big trouble. And she cannot even find a way to somewhere to put her head. And we were told that Kwazile Nyumba Tatu Tunjenga ya Shosho Nyambura is a game changer for her. Kwa sababu sasa ataka hapo na kuna cha mkijana kikuja, grandchild kikuja, atateseka. Because the, 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 the situation is not looking that good. And again, I want to emphasize something. I've been in Mount Kenya. Those three families, by the way, one of the things there is drug, alcohol, and drug abuse. I think when together Geshe was talking about let's fight drug abuse, the social complexities around that life in um, in that squatter camp. If you're someone who comes from this place, I think you will really easily relate. Mambo ningumu, and I really hope that by the time I'll be leaving Muranga on Thursday, and not Muranga Nyandaru on Thursday. I shall have achieved building those three houses. We are making tremendous impact. Of course, I can tell you, each by case, case by case, you really get touched. So tomorrow on Tuesday, I am going to buy the materials as Mauna Construction already meanza. So the two houses, we are going to start the two houses, Kesho, Zitakwa's Mesmama. So we're going to buy the materials. And now the only I said we wanted to do the two, then the third one do tutafanya on Wednesday. So for, I think what is remaining for this, if you can be a deficit of 60,000, we'll be able to buy materials na tumaliza nyumba hizi mbili. Kwanza. Tukimaliza hizo mbili, ye nyambura na yamze. Then on Wednesday, we shall do the fundraiser, what we shall collect tomorrow. Uh, on Wednesday, to Wednesday, you are tattoo, so that we can finish it by Thursday. So send me any amount you have. I, if we can be able to fill the deficit of 60,000 between now, I'm shooting this video at around what? At around 8 to tomorrow at noon. It sour so that to buy materials to Malizi Zinyumambili. Then 
on Wednesday, we shall now pitch camp for the third house. And thank you very much. I can tell you um, we are really making making tremendous impact. Kwamba, we are filling a gap. That that I can tell you. And sometimes it's interesting. Even if ukikakwa society, you'll easily you really really relate. Yeah, Majina ni ale sijoki kinyajui Na kaa hapa Kutoka 1960 Mini kwa hapa tunaleko na tapu ya nyumba And uh, I made an observation When I was moving in those houses I saw, you know, those shanties I saw the posters for politicians there and something crossed my mind when this, those people who bring these posters do they tell the politicians the condition of those houses? Probably just a question for thought. Now immediately Uhuru Kenyatta came out and the celebration of the birthday started some three political developments I want us to pay attention to. Number one Faith Gitau the current uh, Nyandarwa women rep appeared in Kameme uh, in one of the TV KQ stations and she said that regarding Eshakwa should know that after three years even people of Mount Kenya will forget about him that there existed someone called Rigedi Geshagwa. and that is why when Rigedi was speaking on, on Sunday in that church service in Kambu he was saying that Mount Kenya will not forget what the kind of maybe mistreatment they have suffered on the hands of President Ruto. The guy was saying about that. Partly it's true, they might forget, they might really hold. But then she was asked, so where, what will be the direction of the region? Who will give the direction of the region? Because the guy was on his way to be the kingpin. And the, uh, the Nyandarwa women rep said that they are waiting, they know that Uhuru Kenyatta is there, and their mother Maki is none other than Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta. Now, that is a statement that I think I was just being told by these people here about that statement because we were talking about that again impeachment and that is their women rep, so they are rightfully so what, what she said. So it's coming out, these are people that hit Uhuru Kenyatta. These are people that could not hear anything to do with Uhuru Kenyatta. So when you hear such statements, uh, you know what exactly it is and you can see that even after they get the others out of the way, there seemed to be some simmering vacuum. That there is a lot of confusion going on. Now, that is number one. Number two, in Embu, there was a celebration of Uhuru Kenyatta birthday. And uh, you could see UD politicians heaping praises on the former president, Uhuru Kenyatta. It is very unusual. But I want you to hear that. Kwa majina naitwa John Jiro Kadangu. Mimi ni mwandishi wa chama cha Jubili katika kaunti yetu ya Embu. Na leo hii ni siku njema kwetu, siku ya furaha ambayo tumekunja hapa kusherehekea uh, birthday ya kiongozi wetu Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta ambaye alikuwa ni rais wetu wa nne wa Jamhuri Tukufu ya Kenya. Wakati huu tunasema ni lazima kila mmoja wetu awe ni mtu wa kuungana na mwenzake na tuwe watu ambao wanataka mahusiano na kila mtu. Tusiwe tunaangalia vyama lakini tuseme sote wakati huu tungetaka tuungane vile tulivyokuwa hapo mbeleni kusiwe na migawanyiko sababu tunajua sisi wote 
ni watu wa gema na watu wa gema ni watu ambao wana uchokozi ni watu wanapenda watu watu wa mapenzi mengi sana kwa hivyo kwa wakati huu nasema tu happy happy birthday your excellency uhuru mwigai kenyata tumefurahia kupata ya kwamba um, wenzetu dada zetu na ndugu zetu hapa Embu walikuwa na sherehe kidogo ya kusherehekea siku ya kuzaliwa ya retired president Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta na tulikuwa tumemmsikia asubuhi katika redio ya Kameme akasema anaitakia Kenya eh, umoja na ushirikiano na kwa sasa huo ujumbe wa retired president uh, rais mustafa huru mgai kenyata ni ujumbe wa maana sana kwa sisi jamii ya Gikuyu, embu na meru kwa sababu kwa muda tumekuwa na changamoto tukitumia jina ya watu wa mlima wengine wamesema usiguze mlima wengine wanasema hata kwetu kuna mlima lakini ninaona kwamba kwa busara ya wakoloni kwanza kwa sababu hao ndio walitupa cheti cha wanaume wa Kikuyu, Embu na Meru ikiwa cheti moja ya kusafiri. Baadaye hayati rais Jomo Kenyatta akiwa rais wa nchi ya Kenya wa kwanza akawezesha kusajiri chama cha Kikuyu, Embu na Meru na kwa sasa mimi naonelea kwamba tunafaa kurudi kwa huo udugu na umoja wetu kama jamii ya Kikuyu, Embu na Meru. Ndio tuashe huu ushindani mpya umekuwa katikati yetu. Sisi ni jamii moja, ni familia moja. Na kwa hivyo hata kama tunaongozwa na mmoja wetu awe kutoka kwa familia kubwa yenye itaita ya Kikuyu, na mimi nasema Kikuyu ndiye first born wa hii jamii amekuwa uongozini kupitia Jomo Kenyatta amekuwa uongozini kupitia uh, marehemu Mwai Kibaki amekuwa uongozini kupitia uh, rais mstaafu Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta kwa hivyo hawa vijana wengine wa hizi nyumba dogo ya Embu na Meru pia wakitaka kupata nafasi ya uongozi tuna uh, budi japokuwa kuunga mkono kama ndugu zao wakubwa na ninaonelea kwamba ni, ni, ni jambo la muhimu sisi wale tuko uongozi ni kwa sasa kutoka kwa jamii zote tatu za Kikuyu Embu na Meru kuanza mazungumzo ya umoja wetu kama jamii hii maneno ya mlima imekuwa na, na, na masuala mengi imekuwa um, inakuwa ni kama inaleta maneno yenye utatanishi imekuwa na mambo ya kugawana mlima na si jambo nzuri kwa ajili ya siku zetu za kesho za baadaye kama jamii ya gema na pia kama nchi ya Kenya president uhuru takuletwa kialia no mode yalia so that is what Uh, that, is, that is part of what you can see they've now embracing despite of taking a lot of time to hit and the bash and bashing Uhuru Kenyatta. Now, um, there is the emergence of Maina Njenga. And um, there is, to some extent, there is something Maina Njenga did. Um, Maina Njenga was in um, Ndumberi Stadium. Of, let, let's go before you go to Ndemere Stadium. Uh, Maina Njenga is in contact with the billionaire, Nyeri billionaire, uh, some are known as Madenge, if I'm not wrong, and planning a meeting at the historic Mukurwe, Mukurwe Wanyagadanga shrines in Monanga to install Maina Njenga as the spokesperson, regional spokesperson. And you can see some, some scrambling Now that is going on. Now what he has done is I want us to go to she, he made a speech in um, in Dumberi. In Dumberi there was an event, there was a musical event. Then that musical event was organized, but it is not a coincidence that politicians 
both um, um, politicians from Kalonzo, Kalonzo Musioka and Eugene Wamalwa attended that event and were given political platform alongside Maina Njenga. So, I want us to listen to Kalonzo Msioka and, and look at the, the attendance of that event in Dumberi. That It was a musical event and then it was also organized with intentionally to celebrate the birthday of former president Uhuru Kenyatta, the cut was kept there. Now if you look at the turnout in that event and the messaging by Kalonzo Msioka first, I want us to pay attention to that. <laughs> Pesa hawana. Na walisema ataweka pesa mfukoni. Wameziweka? Wali wa geuze katiba. Waongeze ruto siku moja. Inawezekana kuongeza hii toke miaka tano mpaka miaka saba. Wangapo nasema la asha. Wangapo nakata. Sema tumekata. Wakitaka wapunguze baada ya miaka 2027 waende nyumbani next year hiyo tutakubali lakini atuongeze hiyo haiwezekani kwa Kenya yenye demokrasia na wewe tumana kai Kenya na tuugeta tupaiga nyopa yene kachura yoke nyopa yene kachura yoke wataonyesha uhuru mwigai dust wao tena sasa wanasema wataonyesha kashagwa dust nataka niwaambie wenzangu mnaosherekea akiwemo ndugu yangu weta akiwemo ndugu yangu kindiki wale mnasema mtaonyesha dust wanajua ya kwamba dust is constant asante tusho pamoja zakayo enda siende これ <laughs> ドカケルマケウテフィオ。さあ。ドカケルマケウテフィオ。シャイタンにもいれいらとドゥバラファラファラ。レイハラがねて。レイトゲ。レイトゲ。レイトゲ。レイトゲ。レイトゲ。レイ
Rigadi tends to, Rigadi should not try to convince Mount Kenya that his troubles with the former president Uhuru Kenyatta can be or should be owned up or rather should not shield with the community. Now, um, sorry, um, sorry, sorry, someone is just calling. So, um, this is this is a statement that you're saying he was saying that the community should not be carried along with this there is something there is a narrative and i want to take a minute and debunk it and i want to ask you our viewer especially if you relate with the politics of this region the narrative that regard impeachment is personal and has nothing to do with mount kenya how potent is it how will it sink to Mwananchi? If you talk to Mwananchi down there, if you talk to Anjiku, if you talk to Mamboga down there, especially from this region, do they buy that narrative that regarding Matala Sabab Shidayake, Alkwanongiambaya, Do they take that narrative or they are reading betrayal? You can if you're a political observer, that narrative of Rigadi is out because of his personal troubles. That has never been. The fallout that has never been at the center of any fallout. The truth of the matter here is this: prior to that fallout, regarding being the deputy president and looking at those speeches that he was making, he had successfully thrusted himself as a key political figure from Mount Kenya. And there is no politician that speaks Kiku in events more than regarding Geshago in that region, if you ask me. So. It might not be easy, but it takes a lot of work to convince the region that Rigadi is out because of personal fault, and so there is nothing like betrayal of the region. But what will be a game changer in this is the moment people start asking that, we have many votes in Mount Kenya West, but the position has been given to Mount Kenya East. To that extent, I can tell you the narrative of betrayal will hold and will really increase. I don't want to delve more into that because that is, of course, for the experts from this area. Now, Uhuru Kenyatta is emerging, and despite of his silence, him leaving the political scene and you know, not being bothered on what is going on, things are still, people are still looking for him. Even William Bruto is pushing a unity narrative. There have been reports that he's making efforts to reach out to the former president Uhuru Kenyatta so that he can mend fence despite of Uhuru remaining non-committal on that. The president said, I don't hold grudge with anyone, so let's have peace and unity for the stability of the country. William Bruto has been banking on that. And if you see the recent trip, I will I will analyze Uhuru Kenyatta's trip in West Africa. In details, much of this will actually come out. When against the smear campaign, Uhuru Kenyatta maintains his relevance. Hmm. Why against the smear campaign? There was a smear campaign orchestrated by these fellows in UDA Uhuru Kenyatta maintains his relevance. I want to explain that briefly, but I still want to ask you, we are doing granny care in Yandarwa. Tomorrow, two houses out of the three, Zitakwazi Mesmama. So we are buying materials to make sure all that is done. So the deficit for the, I think for the day to Maliza is around 60,000. So by cash, you go to Maliza, you go to my pata here, I'm telling you by Sasita, I think we shall have managed the two houses so that we start the third one on Wednesday. So kindly reach out, participate so that we can see, can bring that conclusion. Now, number one, Ruto did not achieve the change effect that he promised. You know, let me tell you, um, I did a, a, a visit. This is the third, this is the fourth Mount Kenya County I'm visiting. I visited Kirinyaga when I took that boy to school. I've gone to Nyeri, I've gone to Moranga, now this is Nyandarwa. The first trip I did was in Nyeri, and I remember I interviewed a female border border lady, and she said, Sisi tuliambiwa Sisi hasla tutagrow ata Sisi tuafika kama ye, uliona kama ye lanza kuuza nini mpaka kagro. Now, the, 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 the symbolic hasla fund that was floated collapsed, it failed. 
Now, the feel-good effect and the overnight success that was promised was not done. And the change effect is not there. So someone will want to make a comparison. Where is Uhuru and Ruto? And you'll have bear me witness that probably on the cost of living, William Ruto has managed a uh, cost of fuel. He has managed, not, not where Uhuru left it, but he has managed to 130, 140, 230, 200. He's managed cost of, um, cost of unga. But then look at what's happening in health and look at what's happening in education. So he solved the problem, partially solved the problem on unga. But look at what's happening in health. So that effect, that feel good effect is not there. People are really, really, really not. Things are really not working. So someone will still fall back and say, ah, here you go. The other issue is, you see, the pulling Raila to work with Raila has salvaged the image of Uhuru Kenyatta. And I remember Brigadi said this. You know, it is the same fellows that bashed Uhuru in Mount Kenya because Uhuru had a handshake with Raila. But when things became tough, they have also gone for that Raila. So on that charge, if there was a charge sheet against Uhuru Kenyatta, that one of betraying, I don't know, Ruto to work with Raila does not hold. Remember, that is the political narrative that was sold around this place. That now do not hold because even you yourself, you are working with that Raila. So that has really saved Uhuru Kenyatta. Now see, people see Uhuru Kenyatta that me, a man was really after the truth. So if, you know, you know, Ruto demonized the handshake. Now him, he has had handshake with Raila. And handshake was used. I remember when together went and said, Sister Lioli was Alimena to Liogopa. So Babu, I don't know. I don't want to get those. Now, the other issue is the smooth transition. You will take it to the records that uh, Uhuru gave Ruto a smooth transition to a constitution. Despite of all that, and again he decided to stay back. So that the charge that he wants to take power. Remember, after immediately after 2022, they maintained Uhuru attacks. And I said that that is not politically potent for 2027. At some point, William Ruto will have to drop it. And he dropped it. He dropped attacking Uhuru, this, that. They, have to, they had to drop it because you could not carry that to 2027. So that, trans, that smooth transition happened. And I think he managed also to pull out of the political arena so that people see him as the neutral person now. Looking at the political development, if Rigadi is being kicked out and loses his relevance, you know, um, if you have Kindiki, you have Ichungwa, you have Nidhi Nyoro, you have them, they have remained, they have behaved childish, for, a bet, for lack of a better word. They have remained, they have behaved juvenile politicians. So Uhuru maintains the godfather. The other issue is, I think, the deputy president's position is undermined and it's no longer lucrative to the people and that is why i want to say when you said it when someone cannot see i'm a deputy president so they cannot see the authority of a deputy president they cannot see that position has been rendered like a cabinet slot so even if you have kindiki you still can't convince you can still can't pacify because people don't see that position as a very powerful position and i can tell you I talk to people around this place, they're saying, ah, this is um, Akuna Mutu Sai, Labda Uhuru. That's what they tell you. Ah, Ichunga Pana, Kinjuri, ah, no. Um, Ndidi Nyoro, ah, no. Ah, Labda Uhuru. So there is a bit of that fallback. And I think it will be interesting on how things will move to 2027. I like Uhuru Kenyatta's message. Allow me before I sleep today, uh, as you help us support this mission, I will analyze fully. Uruguay Natal Strip in West Africa. Thank you.